Hello YouTube, it is Jacob Zax from Dark Gadgets, and this is Windows 10. Windows 10 is a combination of the best things from both Windows 7 and Windows 8, but the question is, should you upgrade? Windows 10 brings back the start menu from Windows 7, but it does it in a way that feels more updated. The format that Windows 7 had that originated in Windows XP was great for computers with a mouse, but it didn't really work for touchscreens. When Windows 8 came out, the new interface was great for touchscreens, but bad for mice because you would have to drag the cursor all the over the screen in order to select the app that you wanted. Windows 10 introduces a hybrid approach to the start menu. It doesn't take up the whole screen anymore, which makes it great for computers without touchscreens, and the live tiles still remain to get the instant access to information and also makes it easy to use for touchscreen computers. Overall, this is a really welcome change. All of the hot corners and charms bars are gone, and they're replaced with one feature called the Action Center, which is essentially a notification center. I absolutely hated the different gestures that I had to use with Windows 8, so this feature makes the experience of Windows 10 a lot better. One thing I really did like in Windows 8 was the ability to snap windows side by side, allowing for really quick multitasking. Windows 10 makes it even easier to do with some minor modifications. Also present is a new multitasking layout that reminds me of Mission Control on the Mac. It displays all open windows as well as the multiple desktops across the system. Cortana also makes an appearance right on the desktop of Windows 10. I actually really like this feature as it allows me to make search inquiries without opening up a browser. Cortana displays cards with information you might need just like Google Now does. Speaking of browsers, Microsoft finally retired Internet Explorer in favor of a brand new browser called Edge. Edge has a really clean design that's optimized for both tablet and mouse usage. Performance is really good on this browser, which is a welcome improvement. For touchscreens, a really cool feature is the ability to annotate over web pages. However, I didn't find myself using this as much after the novelty of it wore off. The only thing I don't like about Edge is the lack of extension support. However, this could be something added in a software update in the future. The transition between laptop mode and tablet mode for two-in-ones is a lot better than before because of a feature called Continuum. Since Windows 10 optimized the experience of using a laptop with Windows 10, using a 2-in-1 as a laptop is much easier to do, and is also more productive. When it's time to switch to a tablet mode, the desktop automatically switches itself to make it more tablet friendly. The start menu turns back into the start screen from Windows 8, and any modern apps will run full screen. This is a feature I really like because it optimizes the experience for each function of the device. The Xbox app is interesting, however I don't have the proper equipment to test it. Some other reviews have said that there's almost zero lag and it's really fun to play Xbox games on the PC. Overall, this is a really solid Windows release. It feels like an evolution of Windows 7 and a fix for all the problems that were introduced in Windows 8. Now, the question remains, is it worth it to upgrade? I personally think it's a great idea because of how functional this update is. And because the update is free, it's hard to find a reason not to. Thank you for checking out this video, and if you enjoyed it, please don't hesitate to like and share as it really helps us out.